have a first uh, lecture by Mark Beckley, Aksai Sadesh, followed by Dr. Karunakar. Yesterday's cancer case uh, speaker. We'll also get a 15 minutes talk today between 8.15 and 8.30. 8.30, we are going live to Apollo Hospital. Dr. Sai Satish, the chairpersons are ready, audience is ready, kindly go ahead. Thank you all, first of all, for having me here with you. Even though I'm not able to be there in person, uh, my topic for today is a live in box of Mitroclip, uh, is what Dr. Rath wanted me to speak about. So without uh, further ado, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and start the case. Is that okay? Please, please. So the patient I have to discuss today is a 62-year-old man. Oh, one sec, let me just get this up. So the patient we're going to discuss today is a 62-year-old man, a diabetic, hypothyroid. He was post-COVID since July 2021. Uh, double vessel coronary artery disease, had an angiogram with an NSTMI on 29-10-21. So he was doing very well till October 2021. He had COVID, then he had an MI, had... A, the MI, they found two lesions, had a PCI, then unstable angina, re-MI. The angiogram showed triple vessel disease. Subsequently, he had a CABG. But after that, his LV kept dropping, and he had recurrent heart failure-related hospitalizations for the past six months until he was diagnosed with ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy, severe mitral regurgitation, uh, severe, PA uh, severe pulmonary hypertension, uh, azotemia, creatinine around two, worked up for transplant, unfit for transplant. He was referred to me by uh, a surgical friend of mine who he went to for VAD because they were not able to control his heart failure. Uh, I'm just going to go directly into... So if we just the... interact, Sai, uh, a patient like I... this... Uh, hi, this is Anil Dhal, and uh, with me is Dr. Rakesh Jaswal, uh, Dr. Reddy, uh, Dr. Louis, is Amir, Arijit. There are a lot of guys here. So in a patient like this, uh, would you consider LVAD as a, an option or would you target the functional MR with the dilated cardiomyopathy as a, as how do you assess what is responsible for worsening his symptoms? How do you assess whether the MR is the dominant component because you're not going to obviously alter the LV function, whereas an LVAD Correct. may be a solution or a transplant would be probably if you can get a donor so so he was turned down by the trans for the by the transplant team because of uh his creatinine being 2.83 and uh i think at this point of time the surgical team said that before they go elvad is a good idea in my opinion but i think at a 62 year old man the rationale of attempting the mitroclip was the one thing that worsened his complaints from the post in fact, state to now was the appearance of moderate MR that became severe MR. So, I mean, uh, we all know so that Paul Graeber taught us the, the concept of proportionate and disproportionate mitral regurgitation. So, um, what were the features that prompted you to choose uh, um, uh, a mitral clip as a therapy for the mitral regurgitation uh, rather than consider an LVAD as a primary option? Okay, I wish some of my surgical colleagues were there to help, but uh, the, the, the rationale I chose, and uh, to put it very simply, was that I felt that the mitroclip was far less invasive. I felt the risk of the procedure was far less, and I had a detailed discussion with the patient, and he was doing quite well with the same EF with mild to moderate MR. What made him really sick was the appearance of severe MR. So I felt that it's less invasive, safer and even from the uh, mitral bridge registry data if you see 26 percent of patients who had a mitral mitro clip as a bridge to transplant while waiting for a heart went off the transplant list because they did so well so that was one of the rationale the second rationale is over the last year and a half i've done about 70 to 73 cases out of which about four cases were on a transplant list interestingly all four of them went off the transplant list, uh, maintaining an EF about 20, 25%, still doing well functionally. So considering my past experience, considering uh, international data at that point of time, and 
seeing that the one thing that I felt made him sicker was the appearance of the new severe MR is why I decided to go for the mitral clip. What I did counsel the patient was that you always have LVAD as a fallback. And if the clip doesn't work, that's what you'll end up with. And if that you're willing to accept, then let's go ahead and clip you and see how you do. Sure. Sir, I want to ask one question. <clears throat> Dr. Reddy here. This patient undergone an angioplasty, then afterwards he re-blocks, many blocks appeared. He uh, operated him. Why did he not deteriorate? You expect this patient to improve after operation? Yeah, but sometimes the myocardial damage has happened and the LV remodeling actually tethers the posterior leaflet down, producing the... So this is an ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy, if I may answer, and he's got a functional severe mitral regurgitation. There is no structural abnormality. So so we, we understand that there's an annular dilatation in a functional MR. I think we'll go ahead with your case, otherwise we'll keep discussing this till the cows come home, so, so I... <laughs> just, just one more question. How many times was the patient hospitalized for heart failure before you decided to consider for a mitra clip? Uh, this patient actually came from Assam. He had four heart failure related hospitalizations in the last six months. What I do in my team is uh, what guidelines usually dictates, which is uh, if we are not able to hold him with a decent quality of life with GDMT, then he is considered for a mitra clip. Great. I think we should see the case because uh, that's what we're here for. Okay, perfect. So what I've what I've done is I've. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So what I've done is I've just kept the unedited video recording. I must confess I'm not very good at live in boxes while I've done live. So please help me along the way if I need. So this is the live case recording. I'm just going to let it play out without the audio and talk along the way. I So the patient is under GA. There's a pre-procedure TE that's done. This patient was done about 10 days back. As you can see, the post, there is enough length of the anterior and posterior leaflet. You can look from the 3D enforced view that it is, there's a, there might be a small cleft in the posterior leaflet there, but uh, but majority of the jet is central, like every functional. Uh, A to P2, canted slightly laterally, and um, I'm going to go a little forward. So we assess the MR in bicameral, and then we put our explain on it and scan forward and backward to see the exact, exact extent of the MR. I'm going to see and get you an image where you can see the actual full... I use a micropuncture needle for the femoral axis. Uh, just, it's not ultrasound guided. I just stick on the femoral head. So my hemostasis is easy if ever I need to. I use a single per close after I do the micropuncture and then start with an SL. So that's the stick. Sai, do you have a good uh, TE image showing the severe MR? I'm going to show it. The reason why I flipped through We were a little that... perplexed. No, no, no. Don't be. Don't be. I'm so sorry. The reason I flipped through is that the minute I finish the puncture and, and the transeptal, then the MR assessment is much better in this video because this was a quick case. Uh, I, I promise that I won't disappoint. <laughs> I'm sure. Let me, let me start my timer just for... Hang on one sec. Here we go. Okay. So, by cable for transeptal puncture... After the perk closes in, the minute I'm in the right atrium, 3,000 heparin is given. From the SVC pull down, what I like, what I'm quite used to where I need to be for mitra clips. What I want to do is I want to get the puncture posterior and superior. Now, you're most coaxial to the valve plane, the more inferior you come. But that is at a trade-off of height. And for us to be able to maneuver the mitral clip comfortably, we need at least 3.8, 3.9 to 4 centimeters. So uh, what I like to do is as I'm coming down, I turn clockwise, which flips my needle posterior. And I come down and I come to the nice thin part of the septum. You can see the needle come down nicely. You can see both fluoro and, uh, and my echo line up. So once I make the intent, once I make 
So the minute I start this procedure, my priority is echo. So as you can see why I flipped the fluoro away and brought the echo right in front of me. I'm just in the thick part of the step to me, coming down to the thin part. By now I know that where I have to be nice and posterior. So once I get this indentation, I go to four chamber, measure the tip of the indentation to the base of the annular plane. If I have anything over 3.8, 3.9, I take it. That's what I need. So that's as far as the transeptal is concerned. The minute I'm in the right atrium, 3000 heparin is given. As you can see, this is a nice view. The measurement here shows 3.91 between the base of the mitral plane. You can see I'm nice, nice and high. So then double check again, make sure I'm all right. Uh, you don't use any fluoroscopy at this time, checking in the RAO or the LAO no, uh, no, to see no, what is no. the distance on the mitral valve. Nothing, because I have, I, I, in the beginning I used to, but now the echo is just so much better yeah, because I have both planes. And the only thing that I have to be cognizant of is that because I'm posterior, that if there's too much tension or too floppy a septum, I shouldn't go poke the posterior wall. So I, I dent it just enough, a, a brief prick pop right through, and then pull my uh, guide back and just the sheet goes in. So, so do now you take a standard Mullen or you, is it an SRO or what are you using? I just take a standard one, uh, SR, just the, just the base one, eh? SRO. So you now you can see I'm inside the LA. Now there's one thing I do, uh, which is which I feel is invaluable for my mitotic procedure is I get two wires into the sheet, into the superior pulmonary vein, and I put a pigtail into the LA. Now the beauty of the pigtail is I've seen so many operators not use the pigtail, but the beauty of the pigtail is that even before my anesthetist knows something is wrong, I know something is wrong. Because when I am under the mitral valve apparatus, even if I'm just slightly denting one of the cords or even like tipping one of the cords over, the MR increases, the LA pressure increases. So even before he sees the BP drop, I already know where I am. So the LA pressure is invaluable for me. So anyway, the two wires in the superior pulmonary vein. My pigtail goes in immediately. The minute I'm in the LA, patient is full heparin, ACT 300 plus. You can see the LA pressure, almost 70, right? Yes. So now we know that by reducing this LA pressure, whether his LV improves or no, clinically he's definitely going to feel better, which is the beauty of this therapy. So pigtail is in, LA pressure is live. The second Amplax super stiff wire takes the steerable guide catheter. Uh, depending on the anatomy, what I like to do is I like to sometimes give a little guide negative so it's almost uh, horizontal. It helps me pop across the septum a little easy. You can see the nose cone is in, and this is in real time. If you keep watching it, you'll see that uh, just I wiggle it a little forward and backward. You can see the serrated nose cone in echo, and there, you, I just popped right in. So once I pop in, first take the wire into the dilator. The reason is that I don't want the super stiff wire at the valve allowing air in when I take it out. So the wire goes into the dilator, then the dilator goes into the guide catheter, then everything comes out. Uh, and you can see what's happening. The mounting unit is placed. My guide, cat my guide catheter is mounted on it, all locked in place. So now let's get you to the MR. So the guide is pointing posterior at this point of time. So I have, it, the guide was nice and deep. If you can look at this, there was almost three, 3.5 centimeters of the guide. I like to have about 1.5 centimeters. So I pull it back. That's where it is. Now I'm waiting for the clip. Usually in functional MRs, I like to take the NT clips, which are the smaller clips. We have two variations, the NT, the slim one, which is four millimeters and NTW. Uh, what I what I did in this case is that I took the XTW. The reason is his valve area was big enough just to have, it was around 4.3, 4.2. And in functionals, you don't want to take very wide clips because you pull so much of the valve together, you put a lot of tension on the leaflets. Not only that, you have higher filling pressures and you have a lot of stress on the leaflets, so you don't want one of them to detach in the morning. Uh, so the recommendation is uh, uh, wide clips, NT, XTs for degeneratives and NTs for functionals. But in this case, looking at the anatomy, I felt I would get the best result with a single XTW. 
the W helps me hold the leaflets more stably because six millimeters, like a little table tennis paddle, it holds it down. So I think the clip is getting ready. Let me just move on to the clip. Yeah, there we go. So that's the clip. Uh, under fluoro, the little few bubbles you see are just the flush that's adjusted. As I'm moving the clip, you can look at it in here. So the clip is moved in. It's important to key the clip correctly. As the clip comes out, I just keep my echo and short axis of base because I want to look at the superior pulmonary vein and I want to look at the cumbrian bridge. Um, it's important for me to get these two points in between this. So as you can see, I'm approaching the cumbrian bridge here. That's the superior pulmonary vein. That's the LA appendage. And once I get this to straddle, then all my knobs and levers work. But I have to make sure I clear the cumbrian bridge first. So as I'm moving forward, you can see I'm trying, my echo, my echo cardiographer is trying to find the clip. I just wiggle anterior and posterior a little to free myself of the cumbrian bridge. You can see here I'm nice and anterior. I'm on the iota. So now I go guide posterior. I move away from the iota. And if you're looking at this, you can see me come directly over the valve. And now is when you'll get your echo assessment of the MR as well there. So you can see I moved away from the iota, coming over the valve. I start giving a little M. You can see the little M. So now I've cleared the cumulian bridge and I'm nice and over oriented towards the valve. So at this point of time, I go to Bicon, LVOT, explain. So I can see it, it's, I've actually made this in such a way that we use just very few views, but we know exactly where we are. So once we come to Bicom, we can see where exactly the jet is. LVOT will tell me where exactly I want to grasp my valve leaflets. So the important thing, what I'm trying to do now, if you see my hands, I'm moving the whole unit forward and backward. So what I'm trying to do is once I get my valve facing the valve, facing the mitral, once I get my clip facing the mitral valve, I want to get a nice 90 degree angle between my guide catheter, the clip. And when I move the clip like this, I want to be facing and going directly towards the LV apex in both planes, right? So you can see in bicommissional, I'm heading vertically down. In LVOT, I'm heading vertically down, which means I have a nice right angle. I'm right in the center looking at the valve and neither am I diving medially nor am I diving laterally. Now, the reason why I was moving the base of the unit is if I give too much medial, I tend to bend inward. And when I move my clip, I will dive medially. So the aim here is to get a perpendicular transition line from the LA across the valve. And to do that, once I get my perfect movement up and down, which is nice and pointed towards the LV apex, then if I want to move a little more medially, a little more laterally to get the jet right in the middle, then I just pull my system in or out and now you'll see the MR. You can see a nice wide jet, it's almost central. I scan forward and backward until I find the place that it's the most in the LVOT as well. Now I'm just adjusting my clips, so I'm bisecting the jet exactly in the middle. So as you can understand, there's a single single clip strategy. So I'm, the grippers come up. I'm opening the clip arms, which is what you can see here. Unlock the clip, grippers up, open clip arms. So now the next step of the procedure is I have to make sure my clip is perpendicular to the coaptation line of the valve. By and large, I do most of my fluoro in AP or slight RAO. So I know that if my clip is facing me like this in most anatomies, it will be perpendicular to coaptation of the valve, but I still have to fine tune it by 3D enforce. Now I'm going to 3D enforce and you can see that I'm slightly rotated. I'm at one six o'clock. I'm in the correct position. I'm where the jet was. I'm right in the center of the valve, but I have to turn a little anti-clockwise to get it nice and perpendicular to my plane of coaptation. So 
When I turn anti-clockwise, I jiggle it a little forward and backward to transmit the torque, and you can see I line up nicely. And then I close the clip, go into the LV. All, when I'm doing this, I'm looking at BICOM, I'm looking at LVOT, I'm looking at my lay pressures, I'm looking at fluoro. And I don't like to go too deep into the LV, I go just below the valve leaflets. Now, this is an important thing. So I'm below the valve leaflets. Now, when I make that level of movement, the first thing I again like to do is I like to check if I'm again perpendicular to the plane of coaptation. So if you look at this, I drop the gain, I open the clip slightly under the valve, and you can see I've rotated. If you look at this image now, you can see my clip arms are open to about 60 degrees. The leaflets are nicely bouncing on them. You can look at the MR in bicommissural in LVOT. I'm exactly in the center of the jet. My LA pressure hasn't said boo to me. So I know I'm not stuck on anything. And this is a perfect time for me to open the clip arms further. So those are the clip arms open. So now that I've established that I'm exactly where I want to be in bicommissural, now all I have to focus on is look at LBOT and make sure I get enough anterior and posterior leaflet into my clip arms. So opening the clip, pulling up, you can see the anterior is falling off. See, it's very important for me to get enough posterior leaflet because, because of the infraposterior MI, the posterior leaflet is tethered downward, and that was the cause of majority of the mitral regurgitation. So I have to make sure I go under the posterior, scoop most of it. Now you can see that my clip is almost at the hinge point of the posterior leaflet. I have enough anterior leaflet in. This looks great. Now, maybe 30, 40 clips back, I would have just closed the clip and accepted it. But now I know that no matter what I do, I always check my 3D and force to see because I've moved down, I've come back up if my orientation is perpendicular to the plane of coaptation. And in this, you can see, even though my clip looks so good here, even though it looks so good here, when I went to 3D force, I'm rotated clockwise. So I actually, I actually go back. Gently turn around while looking at Drop the game so I see the clip. Look at the LA pressure. And you can see slowly I'm turning and correcting so I come 12.6. So I'm nice and perpendicular to the center of the valve to the plane of coaptation. This is extremely important not to distort the anatomy of the valve. And, and see, when I've done that, you can see I've come away from the posterior. And you can see what I'm talking about. The posterior is pointing downward. So once I've gone guide posterior, gone below the posterior leaflet, so I need to go low enough to go under the posterior leaflet, then go under it, come back to 3D force, check, and now I'm extremely happy with my orientation. I'm bang, 12-6. So what are the markers you're looking in the on view here? I'm just, this is the valve. My AML is up here. My PML is here. I'm just looking to see if I'm perpendicular to the plane of cooperation right. when the clip is open. plane of cooperation. That's it. Because in the initial, so what I realized is that if I get this right, the MR is almost non-existent post-procedure and at one year follow-up. So now you can see once I've come where I want to, the posterior leaflet is nice and at the base of the clip. Again, I'm checking to see that I'm bang on in the center of the jet where I want to be. I have to make sure I get enough AML as well. I need at least seven to eight millimeters inside this clip for it to be stable and not come off. Again, 3D force, and this is something I want to show before I put the clip, before I go to the next step. So if you look at what I'm doing here, this is a very controlled, stable procedure. You can see I'm pulling the clip all the way up until you can almost see both the leaflets are well into the clip, up to the base, and these leaflets are making a low dribble. That is when I like to put my grippers down. Now, if you notice, I don't just put the grippers down and lift it up, put the grippers down. See, now the grippers are down. The reason is these grippers are sharp, like tiny shark teeth. You can feel them. And they're like meat tenderizers, right? Each time you put them down, these are 
degenerated valves. These are thin valve leaflets. I don't want to put these things down, close the clip, then open it out again. So I take my time. I align my clip nicely. You can see even the fact that the clip has come up and is supporting the leaflet shows a drop in LA pressure. So now, once I have that low dribble and everything is stable, by the way, lungs are down now. Uh, initially, I started the one important thing that I fine-tuned along my... So now the grippers are down. The nicely thing, I'm starting to close the clip slowly to 60 degrees. Once I 60, I lock the clip. Then I close fully. One important thing I started doing while you can watch the echo is that A, my, all my patients are on 100% FiO2. So in case I have any complications, I have a good 10 to 15 minutes to react if some air gets in like few bubbles here and there. Second thing is that I always uh, have tidal volumes very low at 200, 250. And when I'm just going for clips like these, I even switch off ventilation. So lung is down. My clip is closed. You can see that the anterior leaf, I'm all the way at the hinge point of the posterior leaflet. So I know I've got enough posterior leaflet and my anterior leaflet is nice and stable. So there's, it's not wobbly. And I know I have enough anterior leaflet as well. So clip is tightly closed. Clip is locked. There's almost no MR. So technically the procedure is over. The next 10 minutes is just assessment of leaflet insertion, transmitral gradient. Have I produced a stenosis? Pulmonary vein flow, has it changed? PA, uh, LA pressures have bottomed out. You can look at it from almost 70, the LA pressure is down to 25, 26 now. So even before my anesthetist says anything to me, I know that I've got a great result. At this point of time, what he'll be seeing is the CBP would have come down from about 23, 24 when we started to 7, 8. He'll also be seeing the systolic pressure, which was 80, 70 systolic, will now be a nice 110, 120. And the LA pressures for me have come down. The you MR were wondering is gone. where you were monitoring your blood pressure because the arterial pressure is not on the trace. You was only monitoring the LA it's pressure. Love the confidence. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, it's just that we've, it, it, I've gotten used to it. And it's in, anyway in front of me, it just didn't... Uh, I don't take an arterial line at all. My anesthetist just has the radial line. That's it. Fantastic. <laughs> so you can see the mean gradient. I think my anesthetist is going for a little bit of a walk there, but I think it should be done in a minute. <laughs> You know, what, what I want you all to see, see just two. So we've got one wide clip, bang in the center. We've had severe MR, almost 147 ml regurgitant volume to nothing, to trivial, to trace. Uh, we've got LA pressures down from 70 down to 20. We've got CVP from 26 down to seven. We've got systolic pressure from 80 up to 120. Now, you know that this was the right choice of treatment now. That's why I... Fantastic. Try to gently right step the beginning of the discussion because this therapy works. So one sec, let me just show you this. So you can see a nice tissue bridge here. How am I doing on time, Dr. Ram? I think we're about to get, uh, we'll have to close soon. Your, your in, results in are so good. Uh, uh, you know, Kal sitaram has been, been waving at me, telling me the time is over, but we were so engrossed. In, in I, I looked at my clock. I just realized, give me a minute more. One quick thing I like to do is PML is in. Because what it's all gradients the do you points. accept? What transmital gradients do you accept? Up to five. Up, up to, to five. five. Up to five. Uh, peak uh, gradient ideally, or EDG? I, 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 uh, mean, mean, mean. I, I, ideally, 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 what I like to do is I like to see these twos and threes because that's when they really blossom. So no MR. I let the clip go. Uh, once I've finished, pulmonary veins flow. It's complete pulmonary vein flow is back to normal. You can see no leak at all. And then what I do when I let the clip go, is uh, I have my echocardiologist show me LVOT and uh, bicommissural, so I know where my spear is, take it in, take everything out, single per close. What's really good is to see the clip move with the shadow of the heart. And what I want to show all of you before I say bye and thank you is that this procedure was unedited and you can see even a complex case like, like this from even before I wash up, we started. In one hour, one minute, the procedure is done. Uh, 
patients extubated on table. He was discharged the very next day. Thank you all Fantastic. so much. Fantastic, and uh, a big round of applause from everybody here. Uh, not only the lucidity of the presentation, uh, your, your usual eloquence uh, as, uh, you know, a very difficult procedure has been made so simple. Thank you all from here, from all of us here, and we are now moving on to the live case. Uh, uh, maybe we'll meet again next time. Bye, Satish. Bye-bye.